Lumbricus rubellus. They're a worm that I've only discovered or began raising in the past year. And in fact, I didn't even know what they were called, except for the help of a couple of you, my viewers and subscribers. And they're a pretty darn amazing worm. I've never seen them advertised anywhere. Um, they are a leaf litter type worm. They're not, they're not detrimental or destructive like the jumping worm. And they're super, super composters. The little I know about them is they live in leaf matter. They live in outside. They're beautiful. They live in leaves and ch anything that's rotting and decaying. And if it's old cardboard on the ground, um, I'm glad I'm not seeing a lot right here, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But um, they're pretty awesome worms, actually. They're really pretty, which if you're doing a beauty challenge for your worms, I guess that helps. Um, they can be really quick, but I've learned over time they've actually mellowed out. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so, they're, they're outdoor, basically leaf litter, organic matter worms that break down what they find. They're not invasive, they're not overly intrusive, and they stay pretty deep. If you have like a uh, pile where you dump your grass clippings or your leaves, these are the guys that are going to show up. Even this one here that has the little bit of yellow that may look like a um, euro. No, it's, oh, I almost dropped it. This is also one of them. Um, so when I brought them in, I kept them in their natural habitat. The leaves, the sticks, the bark, everything they had outside, I brought inside because I, I wanted to see what they're capable of. A couple of days ago, for the first time, I added food. Oh, look it, we have a, I got an invasive jumping worm in here by mistake. Okay, this is, you see the difference? See how shiny? In gray, this isn't an adult, so there's no platellum yet, but this is one of the uh, invasive jumping worms. And here's the, oh my god, they went right down in my hand already, hold on. These are the beautiful rubellus, you can see the difference. It's like literally a night and day difference. Let me put this guy in a bucket so it can be disposed of properly. Um, a couple of days ago, for the first time, I tried adding actual kitchen scraps to this bin. And what we're here to discover is, are they there? Have they made their way down to the kitchen scraps, and are they eating it? Because if they are, then I've confirmed that these worms are going to be good composters for even kitchen scraps. And that would be pretty awesome. Now, this bin is actually pretty crowded. Um, oh, here's another invasive worm. See that? They come out when you disturb them. Look, when they move, they move slithery like a snake. These are very small. They can get, they can get a couple feet long, and I have some in a bucket outside I'll show you. But when I collect my wild worms early in the summer, some of these little guys get in here. But as soon as you disturb the bin, they will, they will come up to the top because they don't like to be disturbed. So, okay, so. If I see any more, I'm just going to grab them out. I won't show them to you, but um, I'm sure when I brought some of these in, they were babies, and potentially there were some cocoons. But the rubellus, I mean, they're very, very different. Because both of these are upside down. And they will get the little orange tail, like a euro or a red wiggler. But the rest of their body is really dark. As I was starting to say before I rudely interrupted myself, um, I'm going to interrupt myself again because there's a cocoon from a rubella. So they're breeding in captivity, which is pretty awesome. But I added people food for the first time because I don't know, other than their natural stuff that I've only ever fed them, if they're capable, not capable, I'm sure they're capable, but if they desire that. Sorry, my furnace just kicked out. It won't be on long. It's just for the hot water. Um, 
just going to show you a few along the way. If it's something that they'll attack and, and knock down, or are they just really focused on leaves and, uh, and you know, top, litter, top level outdoor, you know, organic litter. And if they're not going to go to the food, then these guys are going to go back outside and do their job. There's a million out there, but... So as you can see, this is as natural as natural gets because I just took what they were living in and brought it in. And they have really, really broken it down a ton since I started keeping them. And there's probably, I don't know, there's maybe 250, 300 worms in here, something like that. But they're so dark, as you could see from the cup I showed you so far, um, they're hard to see in there natural habitat because it's a absolute perfect camouflage. I mean look at how dark this, this worm is and if you put if you put a little bit of natural material next to it, it's gonna you're not gonna see it very long. They always go between my fingers. They're goofy. They're goofy and I like them because they're goofy, but you can see how how well the camouflage is. That's just some leaves the worm is almost the same color, and they do they do hide pretty quickly. They're not a fan of being in the light. So I believe it's this end where I added, and I'm thinking it was some potatoes, although I'm not positive. Here's, here's another. You can see the bottom side. You can see the vents and the clitellum and the very distinguishable um, pink section near the, the mouth so let's see let's keep digging over here and oh this one looks nice and you see this one has a yellow tail it looks like a lot like a red wiggler or a baby euro it's not this is a a more juvenile version and as i'm getting down to the end where i added the food i'm starting to see more and that's a good sign so we're going to keep on going and take a look. Getting more and more here. I keep showing them to you because I know that they're not common. And I know that they're pretty, pretty, I'm going to say pretty beautiful, but they're pretty, pretty. They're pretty, pretty, aren't they? And I am seeing quite a few cocoons in here. Now they get big. From what I read, they can get up to seven inches I don't think I have any that big in here yet, although I may. I've been leaving these alone more than my regular composting worms because, you know, they're not used to being disturbed coming in from the outside. So let's keep digging down. It may have only been yesterday morning that I added the food. I think it was. But that's okay. If they like it, there will be some there. I hope I am at the right angle and light level that my camera is picking this up. If not, I'm going to be pretty bummed out. Okay, this is a really good sign. Look at all these right here in this handful. It's hard because of the camouflage action going on, but I'm right up against where I added the food. And let me not let them go crazy wiggling away. Could you see how many more are in this handful? We're getting to the food. This guy here's a little bigger, huh? He's this one's a little bit longer. He's nice. I'm getting up against the the added food and I'm seeing a lot more worms. And this material, you know, this is everything natural. There's rocks in here, there's roots in here, there's wood chips. There's all kinds of stuff. I hope I'm digging to the right end, because if not, this disproves everything I've been saying all this time. I think it was this end I added the food. And I know I didn't add a lot of it. Yes, it is. Okay. Starting to see. Can you see here? They got potatoes. Um, and yes, it was yesterday morning 
that they were given the potatoes. And look at this. The big ones are down here. I'm going to try to hold them up. These are the big guys. They are definitely in the feeding zone. I think it was about ooh, 12 noon or 1 p.m. yesterday that I added these potatoes. So about 23 hours and I'm seeing a bunch of worms in the vicinity. And that's a really good sign because if they're going to eat the, the household organic waste, then that makes me happy. I'm trying to slowly work around the food because I want to make sure that that is in fact what they're going down here for. Um, I did try an experiment of adding what I guess most of you would call worm chow for those of you that feed it. Absolutely no interest. They had zero desire. There's another cocoon right here. And I'm seeing, again, I'm seeing a lot more of these guys down, down this end. So let's keep going. I'm just scooping around the potato. These potatoes, they... They were previously frozen, but like most potatoes, you know, they were really hard and it's going to be a slow food. And I thought that would be more appropriate for these guys that are used to eating just off the ground. Slow food. These, they're looking really healthy. You can see the little yellow tail here. And this is not any other type of worm. This is a lumbricus. You can see the distinctive underside. But yet they do get that little, that little red flat tail like a wiggler or perhaps a euro actually they have quite a bit of transitioning ability from different ages I mean take a look at this you're gonna see a light one here and a really dark one right here oh never mind that's my eyeballs this is a millipede I'm not editing that out I think it's kind of funny remember I have glaucoma and I am legally blind in one eye and almost legally blind in the other. So the fact that I can see what I do see is pretty pretty good for me. But um, the millipede is apparently wanting this potato. And see these potatoes? They're not squishy. They're not... They're not... And I didn't break them open. I probably should have. But, okay. So let's try to scoop under a potato. Okay, there is a potato... Let's scoop under it. And look at this, folks. There we go. So it was a potato. I scooped under it. And here's what I found. So they are attracted to... Look at this. They are attracted to... Oh, yep. The potato. And these aren't even broken open yet. I'm going to break them now. So the Lumbricus rubellus do eat the household kitchen scraps. And that's pretty awesome because not only do they eat the outdoor stuff, but they're eating the indoor stuff. Now I want to just, just to confirm, I want to grab another potato. I'm going to grab another scoop up here. The potato and what's around it. There's actually a few potatoes. Look at this. It's a couple of potatoes, a red one, a white one. And you can see all the worms that came down here. They haven't gotten into it yet because these are whole. See if I can break this open for them. Otherwise, it's going to take forever. But they're wanting it. I have the very beautiful black worm here and a lumbricus on my hand. Great. Now, millipedes are going to be referred to as the black worm. I think that's pretty funny. Okay. It is what it is. Here's a, um, oh, where did it go? I was going to say, here it what looks to be, oh yeah, this is a nice, fresh, freshly laid cocoon. And their, their cocoons are pretty big, by the way. They're not huge worms. Well, mine aren't huge yet. They have the potential to be huge. I hope they get huge. This is the first time, yesterday, 23 hours ago, these potatoes were added in, and they're not soft. You can see I'm struggling to break them open. And, um, hold on, I have a nail here. A uh, nail in the wall I used to crack things. So they're already down there. They're already circling it. They're already desiring it. They're already feeding on it to some degree. And the majority of the worms in the bin are down there. 
So that's really good. Um, see, there's even rocks in here. I mean, I just scooped up what was outside and brought it in. Again, I like to give you close-ups of the worms when I can. They're not spastic. You can definitely, even if you can't tell the difference between an invasive jumping worm and these guys, they, it's that they're really, really calm. They get nervous. I find the older they get, the calmer they get. The juveniles are super crazy and just really timid, I guess. They're not... Whoops, I just flipped. There was also another brand new cocoon. You may have seen... It's probably in the video. Oh, there it is now, right on my, my, right on my finger here. So they're breeding, and that's good. They're breeding... They're eating. Let me get into the corner because there's a squished potato over here. Oh, look at this, guys. Look at this. This potato that's open here. That was the one that was open. Look at the worms. Look at this black worm. That's pretty awesome, huh? Yep. Look at them all. So there, oh my gosh, this is awesome. To me, this is awesome. You can see different colors, different shades, different levels of maturity. If you look right here, look at how dark this is. No, this isn't a millipede, this is a worm. I'm trying to get the darn thing out to show you. But um, even, even this one here, look at how dark it is. And that's what they do. They go all these different crazy colors. It's from from pretty light to pink. Oh, look at this. So that's it. There's cocoons. There's two cocoons in my hand. Um, one right here which, that I just covered because my big fat sausage fingers. And then there's one right here. And you got all these worms. So they got down to where the food was and decided to, you know, deposit some cocoons down there. Or I don't know if they decided to. I don't know if it's one of those things they can choose. Or if it's like us people, we don't get to say it happens when it happens. Um, here's a really, really pretty one. Here's the underside. It's going to cooperate. And then when it goes over, look at how dark it is. It's just... And then, you know, you... you, you you put next to the, the material next to them, and you see the next one next to it is sort of a pinkish or amber. I'm not really sure what that color it would be called, but um, the first few times I saw some of the darker ones, I honestly thought they were baby salamanders because they do have a lot of the similarities of the, the, red, the red speckled salamanders we have here. There's a lot of kind of salamanders, but I do have a um, video that shows I have two salamanders in one of my bins. I think it was introducing Sally or something, and that's one of our most common salamander types, and they look a lot like this on the top. And, you know, look at this. It curled up in a ball, almost just looked like a pill bug there. So they have pretty good camouflaging ability. And, again, we're, we're still in the potato zone, and we got all these worms down here. So... That's awesome. That's an awesome finding. I'm happy because <laughs> these guys are happy. I'm happy because this they're going to eat kitchen scraps. I, I wasn't necessarily concerned that they wouldn't because organic matter is organic matter, and they're eating organic matter. Wow, these guys are pretty spectacular looking. Now the question is going to be, how quick do they eat it compared to the reds or the blues or the Africans or the Euros or, you know, any of the worms that anyone may keep. So I have, let's take a look here. Let's, let's do an inventory of the food. And again, I would estimate there's between two and 300 worms in here. Can you see this one crawling across the top? Can you see how dark the camouflage? Now imagine if it was outside with a bunch of leaves and you know, twigs and whatever, you wouldn't even see it. I mean, it's it's still here, over here. But you wouldn't even see it. They have such good 
camouflage ability. See that? It disappeared. But there it is. So, okay, let's do an inventory. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine baby, oh wait, nope, ten baby potatoes that are not rotting. I split them open, but they're not, you see, they're not squishy, they're not gooey, they're not stinky, they're not, they're, they're uncooked, they were not cooked. Um, so 10 baby potatoes and, um, oh, there's a little, little pill bug in here. That's awesome. 10 baby potatoes and two to 300 rubellas. Let's see the progress they make. And again, this is, these are potatoes, so it's not slow food. I mean, it is slow food. It's not fast food any any of the worm species this really has to i mean even if i bend it it's not i mean it's very tough and fibrous and not an easy thing to eat for a worm and i'm sure there's millions of microbes in here that are going to be assisting so we're going to put it down here and i'm going to try to kind of look if they're still down the corner where that la oh there is a potato that's why up, oh, so I guess then this would make 11. So there's 11 potatoes. And I guess I did good because that's the only, uh, I only saw the two, the two invasive worms. And this is one of the long, thin ones. Of course, this is a black worm, otherwise known as a millipede. And this is a black worm, otherwise known as a pill bug. And you see how when you touch it, it rolls into a ball? like a little pill. The ones that are light gray and only can bend in half, those are sow bugs. Pill bugs look like pills. Sow bugs look like, I can't say sows because they don't look like sows, baby pigs to me. But, um, so that's it. This turned out to be a pretty cool, whoop, I spoke too soon. Here's another gray, shiny invasive worm. Again, it's a baby. I think I'll do a quick video later on my invasive worm bucket because I've been collecting them from the garden and putting them all in a bucket and then I have to dispose of them as is required by the county and I will but I'm trying to see just how big they'll get they can't possibly get out of the bucket that I have them in so I'm just doing another quick check and again these guys probably either were teeny tiny babies and I grabbed a handful of worms or when I collected all this leaf mold and compost, there were cocoons in it and they hatched from the cocoons. So I'm always going through, look at, look, at, look at the camouflage activity here. Of course, I just flipped it over and blew that, but um, I'm just doing another quick check. I've done this several times and there was probably a dozen or more invasive worms that I've taken out of here because there's They've gotten so out of control in this area, and I want to make sure that I do my part. And, you know, I'm not a fan of disposing of anything, but if it's something that's detrimental to the environment and harmful to the environment and harmful to the... It's harmful in many, many ways, and then I will do my due diligence and make sure that it's done properly even even a worm they're going to be they're going to be properly exp disposed of you know i don't know if worms feel pain i suspect everything does to some degree at least something big enough if it has a brain it has the ability to feel brain brain and nerves oh sorry i just stepped on something brains and nerves means you have the ability to feel pain. Maybe jabbed the bottom of my foot. I don't know. But so that just happened. That was interesting. That's a new experience for me. And um, 
I'm going to put it back in here. I mean, it didn't. It didn't do anything bad until I stepped on it. So let me know, is this a black soldier fly larvae? And if it is, is it going to turn black before it hatches into a fly? Let me try to zoom in on the guy again here. Guy or gal, I don't know. It's interesting because they look, um, they look, they get stiff probably for when animals come down and then they have that ability to to twist themselves and and uh, give you a little zap it felt like a bee sting at first but it's not burning now it doesn't hurt now it's just a, an initial zap and then that's it so I don't think it injects a stinger actually so no grudge against the bug if something that was several hundred times my weight stepped on me and I could bite it I would too so um, so let me know should I leave this guy in here should I take it out should I move it to an outside bin I have no experience with them I've seen them I've seen these before and I've always just thought they were uh, soldier fly larvae so I don't know if they're good or bad to have in the bin or in the house because it's not my area of knowledge and I will re ask that you guys help educate me there's a little a little pill bug heading toward. All right, guys. Well, what we learned in this video is that the Lumbricus rubellus, in fact, eat kitchen scraps. And here's a couple of pill, pills to go with your morning morning coffee. Take two and call me in the morning. <laughs>